Oh, hero. Hey, man. Come in. I'm just working on these patch notes. I'm streaming, just so you know. I know. I'm watching. I just wanted to make sure you were aware. <laughs> Don't. Don't fart really loud or something. And... Mm. You just blame it on your dog? Yep. <laughs> so we're on patch notes, huh? Yeah, I'm working on patch notes. Actually, multiple patch notes at the same time. Ooh, how does how's that work? Um... There'll be a Mech 5 update next week, so I'm working on those patch notes as well. Yeah, yeah we've been wondering when that patch was going to drop. Yep. It's coming. I, got I think it's uh, Monday, end of day. Yeah, we were talking about how where it's sort of a bummer because if it was just PC, you guys could release a patch really quick, but now that it has to go through the Dude, Xbox, you don't even... Yeah. The, the, the amount of work to get updates and, and patches and DLCs through both PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. And Sony's the hardest. They're, well, they're that's why... It's so hard. That's why it's important just to have that shit, like, perfect before you launch. Oh, dude, it's, so, yeah, you know, it's, like, it's pretty crazy. I'm glad we're not doing Switch, too, or something. <laughs> Nintendo. Help here, turn, you turn around and fight. Yeah, just turn, guys, just turn. Gee, I have to run around the mountain and fight. A drop into our left, we can counter him. Yeah, developing for the console has been an insane challenge for Engage. sure, Taryn. How's the, I mean, again, we, we don't know, like uh, your uh, PlayStation, that was big news, uh, you know, like. No sales figures yet. I've heard rumors that it's doing really well, but I don't know any numbers. I mean, I don't want to put you on the spot. It's just you know, it's no. I'm a hundred percent. I don't. I was just talking to Matt about that. Like he and I are both dying for some numbers because you know. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll all figure out that. when they do their quarterly report. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, it's exactly. like you can't that's hide it. You know. For, I mean, no. it's not like anybody's like like ha ha prove you wrong, but it's just like was it? Did it? Did it? Was achieve? it worth it? Is the question. Yeah, yeah. Hold that left side. That right side, go and push in from the rear. Burrito. Yeah. Okay, right. I've actually been enjoying it as well. I did the, um, I did a separate career of just the Kestrel Lancers, and then I restarted completely from the beginning uh, a new campaign. That Dire Wolf's pushing you guys? I how the two DLCs kind of... Uh, Work in. Uh, they're almost down. Yeah, and, and how they were integrated if you're just doing a campaign. But, uh, yeah, overall, I've, I've been having a good time with it. I would love to see some improvements on AI, for sure. Look at the CT of this, man. It's the second time I've just got black CT. Well, sufficient. I mean, Darren won't be able to say anything but everything i've heard from every single we've heard this twice we've heard it from russ once and then we heard it from chris via recording don't expect a clan invasion on mech 5. i think they've made it very clear that it'll be mech 6. so um that's just again you have to yes you, you have to look at the business perspective too because if they have four years left, right, that gives them like another year of like DLC for like Mech 5, and then they can take basically Mech, Mech 5 and call it Mech 6 and push out another product and get even more sales for a, you know, $60, $50 price point. Like, uh, well, there's multiple reasons why potentially, like, first of all, no decision's been made. So I don't, I'm not, I'm not sitting on any information in terms of what's going to happen with the clans and, and sure, no one, order. no one believes you. You know that, right? <laughs> you can you can say that, but dude, no one believes you. 
I, I ask constantly, what's happening in the next DLC? What's happening? You know, like, I don't, I am not privy to the actual design meetings and conversations. Lying through your beard. Yeah, I agree. That's... <laughs> but honestly, uh, if we we're going to do a clan invasion or do a clan uh, mech warrior, I feel like we would make a better product, you know, building on what we learned from doing mech five, right? So, um, Yes, it could be a DLC, but that would be based off of what we have with Mech 5. I would personally, I, I think we could do a much better job of it if we did Mech 6 and, and that was the clans. But, well, and it uh, depends on what you're doing. Like if it's you're playing from the IS side, then I I don't think you would need to do anything because you could just keep Mech 5 and keep the mercenary aspect and you already have the map and, you know, whatever. Uh, but if you're done, no, like, I, I yeah, I mean, yeah. I just I don't there's been a lot of uh fun conversations about what we could do with the with the clans um so yeah i, I just i don't know where it's gonna go either i i my i talking about it myself right now would be just as much speculation as you talking about it but i would like if we're gonna do it i want to do it right and that's that's what i that's my strong feeling yeah tori i i i'd like it just to all remain and it just maybe rebrand and it just takes you know you can call it mech 5 instead of mercenaries it could be mech 5 you know Kerensky's return or whatever and it's just this addition because like to me it's like i if it's a good product i don't mind paying the same amount of money 30 40 dollars for it if it and then that way i don't have to have two separate products that's one of the issues i have is like you know when anybody brings up it's like now i have two different launchers for two different experiences why don't just have it on the same um you know i mean unless you're going from like unreal 4 to unreal 5 um you could just have a different campaign or a different uh you already have all the systems there so that's that's the only thing like i was like i, I push back on is like just keep it under one roof then your mods are all under, all under one roof you don't have to like segment the community anymore and really if it's a good product people don't mind paying the same thing or you know like for an, an expansion like that's just my opinion on it but yeah, yeah uh, way above my pay grade. Obviously, that's, you know, also we have to take into account what EG7 is going to want potentially. Like if they're going to want to do a big marketing campaign, we're probably, that's, you know, a, another large marketing spend would probably be better spent on a MechWarrior 6 title. Because the thing is, like, even or right MWO now. 2.0. Well, yeah, that too. I mean, that's a whole other subject. But the problem with, um, even with, the DLCs, the expansions we've been doing, it's harder and harder as we move forward to get, um, you know, like media investment in it. Return on um, your investment, yes. Yeah, because it's like, oh, but didn't this come out in 2019? And so it's just harder and harder to get the attention you want. So sometimes it just makes sense to, you know, Mech Warrior 6 because well, yeah. it's new. It's yeah, I, and I get that. I'm, I'm just saying from a yeah yeah from a yeah. player's perspective and that's obviously something that's brought up and we talk about all that stuff yeah. um but again like i just said it's, it's a well and also too i think it's very clear that now that you guys are on all the consoles for the most part uh that would be the direction you take again in the future and i mean again i'm not going to sit here and talk about mech 5 uh i think everybody knows how i feel about it um uh, you know how i feel about it so it's just one of those things where um i understand from a business perspective right because you have four years left you know like of course you're going to maximize you're not going to do four years of dlc for mech 5 um and yeah so we just get a lower return on investment with every d dlc yeah sure right and and a lower um we, we get less uh notice from media and from various sure. sources um so it's, you know, again, not my decision. Sure. I'm here for the ride on that one. <laughs> I mean, I have my opinion and I, you know, but there's, there's, uh, there's other people making the big decisions. Well, and I'd like to talk to that, those people. Like, that's one thing I know I've talked to you about is like doing a podcast, but I'd love to, who is that person? Who do I need to sit down and, and sit down and do a podcast? Cause like, that's one thing that's really, um, very unclear. Like, I know, okay, reach out to you. Let's talk about MWO. I know who to contact, right? Like, you know, and then obviously about the cauldron and stuff like that. But like, who, I have no idea. Um, 
And so it, it's just one of those things where I find that it's very, I well, yeah. I find that very odd that there's no communication that I'm aware of between the player base. And it's like complete opposite of, of anything. Like, you know, like you could say lack of communication happens, right? Matt goes on vacation, you go on vacation, whoever. Uh, someone gets sick, you have holidays, whatever. Things happen, right? We, we get that life. Uh, but like, I have no idea. Um, no idea. I have no idea uh, who, what, There really when or is why. no main person this is more of a team effort than anything i've seen you know happen with piranha um you know i'd say there's multiple people that are making the the decisions whereas it used to be russ right ultimately yeah uh now it's more of a committee which is uh, fine but i i'd st like to me i'd still like obviously i know one you need individual. a contact point yes yeah. i need a contact but it's it's just one of those things where like i do find it very i i still find it odd because generally speaking most developers you i mean you name it i mean whether it's Dest, i mean destiny what whatever uh warframe something there's usually a very good connection of hey what are you guys looking for um as as my, now what's interesting though is now we have this cross platform where I think from a te technical perspective and a design perspective, there's some limitations now. Um, where on the PC, you've got a little bit of freedom because of mods, but then on the consoles, you're you're effectively restricting some of those design features uh, as well, or it makes it even harder to do. Also, um, AA Minis, um, welcome to the channel, by the way. It says, I would have, uh, I found your stream because MechWare 5 was put on the Xbox. I'm not a PC gamer, I had zero idea it was a thing until now. Uh, I want so much more. Well, welcome. That, and if you do awesome. decide to become a PC gamer for MechWare Battletech, let me tell you, there is a whole, whole bunch. Uh, you can play MechWare or you can play Battletech by uh, HPS, which is a fantastic turn-based strategy game I play very often here. Um, and it's got a huge mod uh, scene as well. Um, but yeah, so as far as like MWO is concerned, or welcome like, to the community minis. Uh, as far as Mech Five, I have my, I you know again contact like I do find it odd, and I'm not saying like I have to be that contact as far as like, but like there's no from the developer to the fans. Hey, this is what we're thinking, or hey, here's you guys vote. You know for the next whatever story or how did you find the story how did you know what can we do to improve or yeah you know like what are some things that you'd like to see and okay yeah that's within reason or okay hey we can't do that because of you know xyz like we don't have any any of that going on uh, as far well, as i'm it's, aware it's 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 not being developed the same way obviously mwo is it's not being developed in terms of like um i mean obviously everybody that's involved uh reads the feedback right we release a dlc we re read the feedback and um, absorb it or whatever, but it's not a community-driven effort like MechWarrior Online is. Um, it's a developer-driven, and and I would say that that kind of stuff is happening at a higher level rather than a macro level. And so, you know, our uh, again because we're part of EG7, um, our PR group, our marketing group, they they do a lot more of that kind of stuff, whereas everything is in-house with MechWarrior Online right now. Yeah. Um, well, and to be fair, MWO used to not even be what it is now, as far as that that relationship. No, yeah, totally. Like that's not. Um, and I and honestly, I'd love to see, you know, the Mech Warrior franchise go in that direction as well. But I again, that's not where I'm at right now. Yeah, that's not. I got. I got you. There's no yeah. reason. Bug me about it. Um, but yeah, so that that's been interesting. I would say. Um, as far as MWO, uh, you know, I, uh, you know, I think there's quite a lot to be said, but I don't want to uh, talk too much because, again, um, I think you'll be releasing a little bit more information. Obviously, we got the patch notes. We're recording a dev log today. Yep. Um, I've got the. Pa I'm trying to get the patch notes out first, then we're doing the dev log. So it might be a end of day thing for the dev log, but. Um... I was trying to get the patch notes up before your your three o'clock or six o'clock your time sign off, but now that I've been sitting here chatting away, I don't think I'm gonna make it. No, oh, you're fine. I'm, I'm not. Um, Danny's gone till Sunday, so mm. I'll be. I started late. I I stayed up late last. I just kind of fall asleep, and so I didn't start my stream till one. Usually, I'm always it's 
my first hiccup in a while, but um, yeah, uh, so I'll be around. I'm just going to go. Um, yep, they'll be up the probably hour. in under two hours, maybe an hour. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned devlog. Um, is that already recorded or, or no. do you have to do that? Okay. No, prior, just, you know, yeah. every day we, we look at what we got and we prioritize and I, and so I got this patch notes. I got the update for MechWarrior 5 patch notes. I'm trying to get out the door. Then we're going to record the devlog. Gotcha. Um, in terms of just like, if you want a little info in terms of what's happening in this patch before the patch notes come out, there's, there's some weapon adjustments, about four weapons. There's some mask adjustments, ECM adjustments, um, there's some adjustments on the Griffin in terms of agility, uh, some loadout adjustments on the Thunderbolt, some bug fixes, and then uh, the third quirk pass, which has quite a lot of mechs again. Um, not as many as the last time, but uh, and then and then Verdi and Bog. Yeah. yeah. Uh, minis, not a problem. Uh, well, feel free to ask minis. You can join the Discord as well. Um, if you're familiar with that, um, we have a lot of tech gurus that can help walk you through on finding that. But if you're having any difficulties running the game, um, there's definitely some settings depending on how old your computer is that you're going to want to turn down for your video options and so forth. So, um, but yeah, yeah, we had some fun with the, the bolt-ons it's. It's always a challenge with each with each one of these packs, you know. You know, like I feel like we we got lightning in a bottle with the the warden pack, and all and so now we're always I feel like we're always trying to make something that good, and it's really difficult. But you know, each of these packs goes through a lot of people and and trying to make it as fun and exciting as possible. I like the the predator as well. I love the um, the the color and the 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 the, the feel of the. Uh, Blood ass, blood ass. Thank you. Um, I, we talked about this. So it was funny. The cause, I watched your video. Well, the yeah. afterwards, the predator. Uh, unless you were here yesterday, we were talking about the MWO is an old. Uh, I I wouldn't say it's an, well in the industry. It's an antiquated design as far as monetization, Mac packs, so forth. That's it's, oh for sure. That's, that's all old, right. So, yeah. but that's how the the product started and how fortunately, unfortunately, however you want to look at it objectively as you can. Um, you know, bolt-ons, camo, where most free-to-play games now, right? It's cosmetic items, right? You come out with a character and then you can... Oh, you're saying make those bolt-ons available to purchase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but on top of that, it, it was more of just like, you know, we were talking about the Atlas and how the AS7S has like that Terminator. And ideally what it would have been, it would have been a, you know, full top-down. But the reality of it is, and it's what we came to the conclusion we were talking about all this, is that that requires a large art team um, and it's a lot easier to do when you're working with a humanoid character and you can do that because like ideal, you'd keep the same outline of the Atlas, but it would be physically different. But then also too, is the reason all this got brought up was, um, we have too many Macs and it wasn't like, oh, M fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't like MWO, you know, like, Hey, we're going to bring in a brawler. And you were very selective. I mean, the map packs or mech packs, I mean, seven, six, uh, you know, plus mechs. And so yeah. you were inundated. And so instead of the, again, it worked for its time uh, and obviously it was very successful. Uh, but from a balance perspective, but also moneti monetization, uh, it just doesn't make sense because, okay, let's just say you, you, you take the time to create this Atlas skull and you sell it. Well, then one you have to have the back end for that to you know how many people actually buy it to where it's worth well the problem with the current bolt-ons is i'm assuming bolt-on sales are probably significantly lower than anticipated and so you spent all that time and money you know an effort and then it comes up well the same thing could be applied about a skin but that's also because um ideally what you'd have to do is it have to be on like all atlases like this skin can be applied to the as7s mm -hmm. asmd and so forth and so on um but can you justify the cost of making it well again i think you could if the game would have been designed from all mechs are free and you just buy cosmetic items i think the you know like but that's not how mwo was it never was built from the ground up for that um 
And we have two challenges right now. We, we obviously have the system with which we can work within, which is extremely limited. And we're learning, obviously, all the mistakes that we made way back in the beginning that we have to live with now. Um, some of them. Including the, some yeah. of them. And, some of them and, and then the other problem is all we have is Mark and yeah. we're running him ragged. Like he is already working at the the most that he can possibly do for one person doing all the artwork. And so, um, I, you know, I love the direction that we're going with, with the, the way the mechs look and the bolt-ons and all that stuff. But um, yeah. we well, just need, we need to add to our art team. Well, that's that's why I was saying earlier is like, if, if people want new chassis, the reality of it is, is you have a minimum, because does Mark do the textures as well for the mechs? The, the, yeah, he does everything right now. Yeah. so. Normally, you would have five bottom. people, right? You have five people. Yep. You have the at concept, least, it, it, concept at the, at the artist. Height, we had seven or eight people. Yeah, well, concept artist, 3D artist, uh, texture artist, animator, designer, right? And so that's that's five just in that pipeline. And I may be missing, you know, one or two. So like, so, um, and then, you know, it goes back again. All mechs have to have, you know, um, these camo colors. So then that automatically eats into... Um, you know, the texture artist has to go and create these camo patterns. And I remember seeing Lauren and back in the day uh, that she would do the um, streams live uh, for that. But um, hey, um, do you want to hold down the fort? I got to use the bathroom or you got to go? <laughs> no, that's fine. I can, uh, I'll answer some questions. All right, I'll be right If back. any come up. Look at this, here I am running NGNG again. It's like two years ago or something. All right guys, real quick, I'm gonna update the um, the PayPal uh, donation link and... Last month was my one year anniversary back at Piranha Games outside of NGNG. Of course, counting NGNG, I've been with Piranha Games for, I don't know, nine years or something like that. <laughs> Weird that that got in there, Wyrot. Six data, yes. Um, coming December, there will be a completely new map. It's based off of a biome and assets that we have in Faction Play, but it's not in a reworked map. Francois is making a brand new one. It'll be the first time this biome is in the uh, Quick Play lineup and then uh i think we're going to do a second one um so the biome that we're using for the map coming out in december will be hellbore springs and then i believe we're going to look at the hell is the name in the map we have multiple names for every map we have the internal name and then the name that it is in the game the the other biome is well it's called mountains internally i forget what it's called I'm back. yeah so basically the new biome maps are are going no not alpine it's it's a it's a faction it's another faction play biome that we don't have in Hel quick play Hellebore's. no hellbore springs is the one coming in december which yes. i just talked about okay. but then we're gonna also do the hell is it called it's, it's the one that's like really lush mountains with snow there's the walls that you had to walk in no is that for november no it'll be the 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 next one after January, Hellboy February. Springs. Okay. Yeah, something like that. Um, yes, there it is. Emerald Tiaga or Tiaga or whatever. That's the one. So we're going to use that biome for another 
uh, brand new map for quick play. Because um, again, we don't have artists, so we need to use biomes and you know art assets that we already have. But there are no quick play maps using either Hellbor Springs biome or Emerald Taiga. So those will be two new maps that we'll be bringing in. Yeah, Frozen Core. I want. I want to uh, bet on that. Um, not to be a Debbie Downer, but um, that would. I obviously. So, uh, what a year ago, over a year ago, this whole initiative started with bringing you on board. That's Darren, who you're hearing, uh, and sort of re revitalizing MWO and bringing attention back to it, which we've had for over a year now, but. The reality of it is, is you guys are sort of in a weird predicament, which is um, you're under this this ticking clock, which is you have the license, but you only have it for, again, I think it's like four years. I, I don't know the exact, let's just say round it off to the end of the year, end of the year, four years left. It doesn't give them enough time to basically recreate what they have in MWO, but also would you want to? I think you'd want to do something new potentially as well. Um, they just don't have time and then on top of that um russ has stated he's like it would require a large financial investment and they're not going to do that they're not going to invest i don't know i think he threw out like 10 million or something in a you know two three years time to not know if you can recoup that in a year's time they're just not going to do that so unless unless you know russ changes his mind or but also too is the the big x factor here is eg7 um we don't know is there a directive right They've, they're already working on a new ip as well we don't know if the direction of, of pgi is to go in a different direction after the license uh we don't know we do know that like some uh publishers are like that right uh or, or owners publishers whatever you want to call them paradox paradox likes keeping the stuff in house right so uh, EG7 could very well be that as well as they just want to work on their own IPs or a new original IP which then they would own as well so I'm not really sure and it puts it puts us in a weird like position where we we think the game is worth it and the IP is worth it um, but they may want to move the studio in a different direction I know some studios don't like to remain on the same product forever so I don't know I can say for sure that there's people internally at PGI that are going to fight for the Mech Warrior franchise and to keep it going. Uh, I'm one of them. Um, Matt is one of them. Mark Nicholson is one of them, etc. So that that you know, I'll absolutely be there, speaking directly to Russ, trying to get it for as long as we can have it. And I would love to do Mech Warrior Online too, or like you said, something different, well, something new. But but I, it's it's just a hundred percent like daydreaming speculation yeah because we i um, mean right now because the, no the, the hurdles are already there so unless like anything changes yeah we will now and then we will probably rebrand mech warrior online uh in 2022 we'll remove the solaris uh branding and rebrand it um and and again that goes with what i was saying earlier uh starting up a marketing campaign um you know to 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 get people to come back and check out what we've done but i kind of we're kind of waiting till we get a few more fundamental changes in um before we do that i think but uh yeah five anyway, aces we'll uh i can speak on that um that's actually not how it works um what could happen though and it's something that darren would have to speak up as far as this new third party is involved koku because koku right now is is has access to behind the scenes is can they improve performance and they would have to go in there and do that so it's not just like they can click a button and say update to latest cry engine that's uh, you can't do that um but what they could do is they could go in there now it's also understanding what causes the performance issues in the first place um unfortunately cry engine the one currently is old it's very cpu uh single core dependent as far as that single individual core being used being very high performance um, and as well, there's other instructions. So, um, it's like any engines, it's, it's not as easy as just pressing a button, especially when you have a, um, well, also the, the thing is we're not going to upgrade, uh, CryEngine. It's the, the, the version of CryEngine that we have is 
so modified and so customized over the years that there's just no way to do that. Yeah. Uh, if there was going to be any engine switch, if like we we extended the license and and got the green light, you know, to to switch engines or update or whatever MechWarrior Online, it would not be updating to the latest CryEngine. It would be like you know going to know Unreal or whatever, it would, it, because it'd be the same amount of work. It well, would, it'd be Unreal it'd, or it'd be Unreal Five if the other IP yeah. you guys are working on is an Unreal Five, and that's one thing yeah. that we don't know. So, but it's not we we can optimize more hopefully that's some you know that's something we've talked to koku about is is working on ways of optimizing uh, the version of cryengine that we have but it's just way 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 too too customized and modified to just update it c++ there's like three people who know that i know right yeah so I mean, you know, and, and that's that's where we're at right now. And, and, and that's where, you know, obviously I, I've, I've talked about frustrations and stuff. Um, and I mentioned earlier, I'm just it is what it is. I'm not going to sit around and complain about it. Uh, and I'm just going to move forward and moving forward means I'm going to start branching out a little bit more. And and um, and I would love to keep this channel uh, dedicated towards Battletech McWhorter. But like, I just I just. I just don't know where things will be in four years or less than four years and so forth. So, um, and yeah, new, he was joking. Uh, Kappa. Um, yeah, so, I mean. Ah, uh, Lucian, I mean, in some ways... Yeah, I mean, in some ways, but I think that's what Look, they're dude, trying to do. Dude, we're all prevent. dying. The moment you're born, you're dying. The moment a game releases, it's dying. Um, you know, or it has a limited amount of time. Obviously, since I'm employed here, I want to keep uh, the MechWarrior titles going for as long as possible. Um, you know, it, people have been saying MechWarrior is dying since it, since I've been working with Piranha. Um, I guess, what does dying mean? You know, uh, Hawken died. But I'm not, you know, we're not, we're not talking. I think what MechWarrior Online has going for it is it's part of the BattleTech MechWarrior universe, and so there's just that absolutely uh, dedicated fan base that um, that sticks around. And so I think we have a little bit of an advantage over uh, potentially other titles that don't have, you know, almost 40 years of history and uh, fandom um, that will keep us alive longer than potentially other games. I'm new to the game. Enjoy this game with all the updates. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people are. Um, you know, so... Yeah, man. You gotta... Do you need to get going? Yep. Time to get back to uh, patch notes. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, good talk to you guys. Uh, look for the uh, the dev vlog coming out later this evening. Patch notes will be up in an hour or two um, for next Tuesday's patch. And I'm sure you already went over all the trick or treat stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, I saw it. Yeah, yeah. Cool. That's why I'm running this. This is with the pre mech. That's gonna. I know. Good suggestion. It was appropriate. Yeah, Nuke, um, Nuke says open source everything. I mean, they sort of are with Cauldron, but they're they're just limited, dude. They just can't. That's that's not how it works. I mean, literally no other like, if you're to be like, okay, well, design this and we'll use your whatever. That's, I mean, that's first off, literally no other. I I know of no other. Yeah, that's just not, you know. Not gonna happen. Anyway, um, but we are, you know, again, everything we're doing right now with MechWarrior Online is you know, quote unquote, community driven. The reason I say quote unquote is because we're working with the cauldron. Um, and so that means it's not potentially perfect. But, um, you know, I'm also working on ways to make sure that people that feel like they're not getting their voices heard, or have concerns are going to be able to voice those opinions and concerns over the next couple months before the end of the year, I'm hoping to have like a, a town hall or a round table with the cauldron and, and let people get some some, um, you know, their voice heard again. Uh, directly to the cauldron but um anyway i'm out Sounds thanks good. man yeah, yep talk to talk you later, to you later.